Welcome to the wildest, wackiest, and furriest wrestling video on earth. Get ready to witness the most outrageous collection of entrance theme songs you've ever heard from where else but the deepest, darkest neighborhood in Western Connecticut. <laughs> So hold on to your butts and get ready to rumble because here are the 10 wildest wrestling themes unleashed by WWE. Number 10, Unstable the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior and his unstable entrance theme song were quite a wild combination. I mean, the guy would come running down to the ring like a crazed maniac, aggressively shaking the ropes, and snarling at his opponents like a crazed animal. With its pounding drums and chugging guitars, it was like the soundtrack to a really intense workout video, or maybe Sesame Street on steroids. Now, I can only imagine what it was like to be in the audience back then, watching this muscle-bound lunatic charging towards you like he just chugged a gallon of Red Bull. Number 9, Too Much Mustard, Miss Kitty aka The Cat. While her time in WWE lasted basically only 18 months, Stacey Carter certainly wasn't a flash in the pan diva if you smell what I'm cooking. Now her run as the cat and Miss Kitty during the Attitude Era was a young boy's wet dream as she was shown nude several times on pay-per-views, including her infamous stunt after winning her first women's title after a four-way evening gown pool match. Let's give it up for Vince Russo, everybody. This feisty feline also had a wild wild entrance theme that her horny fans roared their approval for whenever she sauntered out in front of the camera. Number 8, The Red Rooster, Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor was a young baby face the chicks loved. Taylor was a nine-year vet when he was signed by the WWF to play the Red Rooster, strutting and crowing his way to the ring like the cock of the walk. Any chance at legitimate stardom Taylor had envisioned vanished when the Fed planted this weird gimmick on him. And the WWF audience didn't exactly know how to react to a grown man who thought he was a yardbird because fans refused to rock out to this bizarre, upbeat dance track that was truly for the birds. Number 7, Walkabout, The Bushwhackers. The Bushwhackers and their entrance theme, Walkabout, never ceased to put a smile on my face. I mean, have you ever seen two guys walk into a wrestling ring like they just got lost in the outback? And that song, it's like a mix of didgeridoos and cowbells, had a baby and gave it a beat. It's so wild that I can't help but imagine Jim Johnston spending hours in the recording studio trying to perfect the sound of a kangaroo hopping. But hey, who am I to judge? The fans loved it, and the Bushwhackers always knew how to put on a show. Plus, I hear that Walkabout was all the rage in New Zealand in the 1980s. Number 6, Mantar. Widely considered one of the most unorthodox competitors in WWE history, the half-man, half-beast, Mantar approached the ring wearing a ridiculous life-sized stuffed bullhead as his animalistic entrance theme song snorted from the speakers. What a shame, too, that after removing that cringe carcass costume from his dome, Mantar was revealed to be nothing more than a bearded, doughy-looking man. <laughs> Now, a wrestling bull is definitely one of the wildest things you'll ever see in your life because Manny, yes, I think that's what I'm going to call him, Manny the Mantar. Manny would pace around the ring, shuffle his hooves, and actually moo like a cow. Talk about some bullshit. Number five, Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Not focusing on what the guy may or may not have done outside the squared circle, Jimmy Snuka may have one of the coolest entrance themes ever. Now, at the time of this song's release in the late 1980s, Vince McMahon was beginning his cartoon fest cavalcade of colorful characters, which we've literally seen scattered all over this list. And if you like what you've seen so far, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more weekly wrestling theme song content. This wild track is definitely Definitely hot shit. Or as Cardi B would say, Jimmy Snooker off the top rope, super fly shit. Super, super, super fly. Number four, Jungle Warrior Saba Simba. 
In the late 1980s, Tony Atlas was homeless, struggling with drug addiction, and in desperate need of work. So he contacted Vince McMahon about returning to the Fed, and Vince lent a helping hand and agreed to help Tony. But this time around, Atlas wouldn't be cast as Mr. USA. Nope, now he'd be Mr. Africa, portraying a stereotypical savage warrior called Saba Simba. This gimmick was unpopular at best and racist at worst, but Tony credits the character with saving his life. However, the moment a lion's roar and generic WWE-generated tribal music came blaring over the arena speakers and Simba began twerking his way to the ring, he may have come in like a lion, but with Rowdy Roddy Piper on commentary, the Hot Rod made sure to slaughter this gimmick like a lamb. Oh, the fuck? That's Tony Atlas. That ain't no Simba, but that's Tony Atlas. Number three, Kamala, the Ugandan giant. During the early regional territory days of pro wrestling, a lot of fans didn't necessarily know that much about the world in general. So when the Ugandan giant Kamala was announced as hailing from the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa, stomping to the ring with a spear in one hand, shield in the other, and an absolutely crazy looking tribal mask, he scared the bejesus out of everybody. Now fans would normally flock down to the aisle to get a glimpse of practically every wrestler. But when Kamala made his entrance to this savage war drum thing, theme music? Well, they just hightailed it for the rafters. Number two, Danger in the Jungle, The Head Shrinkers. From the bloodline of Afa and Sika came another fearsome tag team from the Isle of Samoa, the Head Shrinkers, Samu and Fatu. These dudes were so wild and untamed, they probably ate nails for breakfast and used trees as toothpicks. Now, they should have been called the Headbangers, and I mean that literally because the Head Shrinkers' name is sort of sus, but I once heard a rumor that their intimidating entrance theme called Danger in the Jungle, with its tropical thunder beats, may have been the inspiration behind the Dougie. Taste me how to duck. Taste me, taste me how to duck. And number one, virtual voodoo, Umaga. The Samoan Bulldozer was a vicious giant whose raw power and speed made him one of the WWE's most feared super heavyweights. Another member of the legendary Anuai family, Umaga passed away far too young at age 36 and quite possibly could have been the real tribal chief of the bloodline. But it's his original entrance theme called Virtual Voodoo that is definitely one of the wildest unleashed by the E because this goes hard for one of the GOAT primal savage characters who was a legitimate scary monster heel. Plus, we need to acknowledge that this song is 100% better than his second theme, Tribal Trouble. And that's it for our list. Have any other weird and wild animalistic wrestling themes we might have missed? Then let us know what they are in the comment section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. I've been Kevin from Wrestling Behind the Themes. Thanks for watching, and be careful to not step in any wrestle crap out there.